Did you know there's no need to butter every single layer of phyllo dough when making baklava? This quick pour method is going to change your mind about how to make homemade baklava. Hey everyone, it's Yumna aka Feel Good Foodie. And baklava aka betlewe in Arabic is one of my favorite desserts of all time. But I haven't really made it much at home until last year when I discovered this quick method that takes as little as 15 minutes to prep. Baklava is a very popular Middle Eastern dessert that we eat during Ramadan, during special occasions, and all kinds of family gatherings. What makes the Lebanese version very unique is the aromatic simple syrup that we use on top. I'm going to show you how to make that simple syrup and how to make the easiest baklava of your life. So let's get started. The first step I like to do is to make the simple syrup. And I even prefer to do this the day before so that the simple syrup is nice and cold. You want to make sure that it's cold because it's going to hit the hot baklava and just create the best consistency when they mesh together. All right, to start, we're going to do, sometimes you can do equal parts sugar and water. I like to do a little bit less water than sugar. So I have a cup of cane sugar. You can use any granulated sugar and three fourths of a cup of water. And I'm also adding a little bit of lemon juice because I love the tartness of it with the sweetness of the simple syrup. We're going to bring the mixture to a boil and then we're going to simmer for five to seven minutes until all the sugar is dissolved and it's nice and smooth. Once the sugar is dissolved, we're going to go ahead and add the rose water. You can also do orange blossom water. Either one is basically rose petals or orange blossom petals that's steeped with water. So it's very fragrant and aromatic and it's the key indicator of the Lebanese betlewe. We love the stuff. We throw it on fruit salad. We throw it in rice pudding. I just eat it like on top of regular fruit whenever. It's just like so good and it just reminds me of home. So now the simple syrup is ready and we're going to go ahead and let it cool for about 30 minutes and then we can also put it in the fridge so it gets nice and cold. After the simple syrup is done, it's time to process the walnuts and the sugar. You can use any kind of nuts here. You can also use pistachios, but walnuts are the most popular in the Lebanese version of baklava. So we're going to start with three cups of walnuts and to that we're going to add half a cup of cane sugar or any kind of granulated sugar you want to use and then just give it a roll until everything is finely chopped. It'll take 15 to 20 seconds. You want it to look just like that. We made the simple syrup, we crushed the walnuts with the sugar, and now it's time to just put it all together. So I've got my tools here. <laughs> it looks like I'm going into surgery, but it's actually a really, really simple method. And you're gonna see when you watch this, it's so much easier than buttering every single layer of phyllo. So to start, we're going to um, add a little bit of butter to the bottom of a nine by 14 baking pan. And I'm using clarified butter or ghee for this recipe. You might be tempted to use regular butter instead of ghee, but I highly recommend using ghee instead because this is basically the fat content of regular butter. So you're not gonna get any of the liquid parts, which means not soggy baklava. And I wanna show you what the clarified butter looks like before. So this is how it comes when you buy it. It's nice and solid and you just want to microwave it for 30 seconds or one minute. So it becomes liquid like this. And I love this container because I just peel it off and then I can just microwave it and it's glass. And now it's time for the phyllo dough. This is one pound of phyllo and it's the large size that's perfect for a nine by 13, nine by 14 baking dish. Now we want to carefully open the phyllo and you'll notice that some of the sheets might be ripped and that's totally okay. It's very normal for some of them to start to rip. And what we want to do is we want to measure it so that it's the same size as our baking dish. So there's different uh, sizes of phyllo. This is the jumbo size. Sometimes it comes in like in half the size. If it comes like this, all you need to do is just cut it so that it's the size of the baking dish. So just work with it, whatever size that you get. So it's about half of this. I'm going to go ahead and cut right along here. And I also recommend cutting it also lengthwise so that it fits the pan perfectly. This is optional, but it just kind of lays so much better in the baking dish when everything is nice and cut. I recommend just kind of taking off a little bit from the front. And now it's time to assemble everything. We'll take half the phyllo sheets and place it on the baking dish. And if you wanted to, you can actually put a little bit more on the bottom than on the top, or you can just keep it exactly even. I like to add probably like six extra sheets or so to the bottom so that the top is a little bit lighter than the bottom. So there's 40 sheets all together. We'll have about 26 at the bottom and about, um, let's do the math, <laughs> 16 at the top, or you can just do 20 and 20. Now it's time to add the crushed walnuts and sugar mixture right on top of the phyllo. And now we lay the other half right on top. I like to try to see if I can have the prettiest phyllo on top, but it doesn't always happen, so it's totally fine. For the next part, we're gonna take a super sharp knife, we're gonna point it downwards, and we're gonna create little diamond shapes all throughout the baklava. So this is how I like to do it. And make sure to press firmly down 
with your other hand so that the phyllo sheets don't move around too much. Make sure when you're cutting into it, you're going all the way down and touching the bottom of the baking pan. We want to make sure that you're cutting through all 40 layers and all the walnuts because that butter needs to seep through later. So I like to do nine cuts diagonally and then four cuts horizontally. So, and it's so much easier to just flip it to cut it. And as much as possible and as hard as it is, you want to try to cut as fast as possible because the feel is going to start to dry out and we just want to make sure to uh, move it along pretty quickly. And now it's time for the magic. Notice I only use this brush once just to kind of brush the bottom of the baking dish. We don't need it at all for this step. You're not going to butter all the layers. I cut through all the phyllo and now we're just going to go ahead and pour the melted clarified butter right on top and it's going to seep through all the layers and just butter everything perfectly. To make it easier, I do recommend using something with a spout. Yes, it's a lot of butter. And no, this is not a diet recipe. So just pour on all that butter. And then what I recommend doing is just kind of tilting the pan a little bit so that you get all those corners nice and buttery. It also helps just to just let this set for five minutes before popping it in the oven. Once it's set, you can bake it in the oven at 350 for 50 to 60 minutes until the top is nice and golden and flaky. All right, it just came out of the oven and it's important as soon as it comes out of the oven to hit it with the cold, simple syrup. And as tempting as it is to dig right into this, you want to let it set for at least an hour just so everything can get nice and solidified and it just forms the perfect texture that way. So see you in an hour. All right, we've let the betle we set for about two hours now and it smells so good and I'm so ready to show you guys what this looks like. The first time I shared this recipe on Instagram, there was some skepticism about how good this could possibly be since you're not buttering every single layer of phyllo. Now, yes, it is better to butter every layer, but that takes an hour plus sometimes. This method only takes 15 minutes and honestly, it's 99% just as good. I'm gonna show you guys too how flaky and beautiful it is. So what we like to do too when we serve it is we like to add some um, crushed pistachios on top. The pistachios is iconic Lebanese style baklava. And I know that every region in the Middle East and even around the world just has different ways that they do baklava. So this is kind of um, our take on it from the Lebanese style. All right, got tons of pistachios on there and I'm gonna go ahead and serve up a couple of them. It does kind of, um, the, the top layer will kind of flake off sometimes, but look how good that looks. It's nice and compact. It stays together so well. And then look at the bottom layers. They're nice and soaked with all that simple syrup and all that ghee clarified butter. And time for the taste test. I cannot believe this is homemade bet lewe. It's so good. It tastes almost as good as the store-bought ones and I'm pretty proud of myself and I just cannot believe how easy this recipe is. One more bite. There's so much to love about this recipe from the simplicity of the ingredients, the quickness of the pour method, and the absolute amazing taste. It's so good. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with friends and family. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any feel good food. I'm gonna share this now with video Matt to see what he thinks of the recipe. Oh, I hear the crunch. He likes it. <laughs> he likes the recipe and I hope you guys do too. See you guys next time.